millions of dollars spent in parks and beaches. The government separates itself from any carnival missteps and education officials not concerned about the Omicron variant. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Friday, December 17th. Millions in overspending in contracts in the Public Parks and Beaches Authority following an audit conducted into the authority's affairs. The audit disclosed a number of observations. Here's Lorencia Smith with that story. Massive overspending on contracts at the Parks and Beaches Authority under the Minnesota administration. That's how the Office of the Prime Minister's Press Secretary, Clint Watson, described the audit report of the authority over the last two and a half years. On Friday, the press secretary provided figures from a 20-page audit done by Kay Christie and co-chartered accountants. From July 2020 to June 2021, the authority's expenditure skyrocketed. They were granted a budget of $15.2 million, but in fact spent $28.9 million, an overspend of $13.7 million on an astonishing 90% higher than the budgeted amount. The auditors in the report highlighted a series of observations which have raised a number of questions. Among them, some contracts are missing despite monies having been paid out and multiple contracts issued to the same individuals but for different company names. There were three different sets of signatures on contracts, all of which purported to be that of the executive chairman, Shannon Cartwright, member of parliament. It is not just a case of someone having a wide range of handwriting. There are three consistently different set of signatures on contracts. And they were all written by the same person. How on earth did they remember which signature to use on which contract? Without having had them examined by experts to the casual observer, it appears that the chairman's signature was signed by three different People. Mr. Watson also noting that some of the contracts awarded have eye-watering terms. At the height of the pandemic, when the whole country was locked down and Bahamians were not allowed to visit parks or beaches, the authority awarded contracts and increased expenditure on contracts to clean those parks and beaches that were closed. Contracts were awarded to sweep roads at a time when people weren't allowed to be on the roads, with some people fined for selling coconuts on the side of the road. One road sweeper was paid $17,000 to sweep roads just three times a month using an electronic electric sweeper. This particular contract paid the contractor $775 per mile. The authority's executive chairman, Mikhail Bonaby, chiming in when asked if the police needed to get involved. Right. What we are doing now is going through the report. Uh, the report will be laid before the board. The board will make some decisions and some instructions will be carried out as a result of our meeting. And so we're working around the clock, but we don't want to get ahead of any investigations, as Clint said in his statement. And so that's something that we, um, we're, we're going to consider. Mr. Barnaby says that there are some 12 to 1400 persons contracted through the authority. All of those contracts have been canceled to be reviewed by the government. I'm Laurencia Smith for JCN News. Meantime, Press Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister, Clint Watson, says the consequences of opening the holiday carnival were far too great. This as carnival operators were denied a second time yesterday, citing concerns surrounding the Omicron variant. This was not an easy decision, but in the same vein, it was a no-brainer. Why? Because you, as an administration, always want to make the best decision for your people. We are still, ladies and gentlemen, let me stress this again, we are still in a global pandemic. And while for the last few months it feels like we're not because the administration has been managing it well, does not mean that it's not present. And there is one thing that can start off an outbreak and we have a catastrophe in our hands and our healthcare sector will be overwhelmed and our hospitals, remember all those stories we did on hospitals being overwhelmed and people dying because they could, those stories that you've not seen for months, they will easily return by a wrong decision. 
He adds that there was no agreement established between anyone and the government authorizing them to operate the holiday carnival. This as a letter signed by Ministry of Finance officials gave authorization to the Progressive Liberal Party for temporary importation of equipment, apparatus, trailers and supplies for the carnival. The bond requirement for customs was also waived in this letter. Political party and the government are separate entities. So from the government standpoint, there is nothing the government has to be concerned about, about backlash or relationships, because the government operates for the best interests of the people. And the government is comfortable that it's done that, it's made the right decisions, and those who are involved understand that as well. So this raises the question, did the PLP sponsor this year's holiday carnival? Did the party know in advance that the carnival would be coming here? And why is this denial happening now that operators have set up shop? To that, the press secretary says this. I cannot speak on behalf of the PLP and the press secretary for the office of prime minister. And to make a statement on behalf of the PLP would be incorrect for me in my role. So I can't speak on the PLP. I do encourage you to talk to the PLP uh, and find out what happened. But it would be improper for me to speak on behalf of the PLP. That's not my job. He insists that the government hasn't made any missteps in this matter. Education Minister Glennis Hannah-Martin not concerned about the Omicron variant of COVID-19 threatening the reopening of schools next month. This off the heels of international news reports indicating that cases seem to double every week. Minister Hannah-Martin tells reporters this morning during the Office of the Prime Minister's weekly press briefing that education officials are completely guided by the Ministry of Health. I'll be honest with you, I would hate for anything, anything, to interfere with these children getting back to face to face. It's their future, it's the hope of their humanity going forward. So I wanna urge everyone, you know, let's try stay safe. If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, do it for these children. Let these children get back in school. But I, I, I don't have a concern now because it's not a concern that's been expressed to us. We're moving, moving full speed ahead to open the schools. Now, as you know, the holiday carnival has just been denied for a second time because health officials were concerned that children, a demographic that remains unvaccinated at this time, could be potentially exposed to the new Omicron variant of the virus. Asked what's the rationale for school reopening in light of this, the education minister says this. The school is a controlled environment with protocols mandated by the Ministry of Health, so it ain't a carnival. So there's no, uh, we, we're not concerned about that. This is a disciplined, controlled environment. And um, we are expecting that we will be able to maintain a safe environment. So I, 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 don't, I don't think that there is a corollary with the, with the carnival, because I think that uh, I'm, I'm, I feel quite confident that all the stakeholders understand the seriousness of this opportunity and that we will do all we can to ensure it's a safe environment. Our children got to learn. They have to learn their brains got to be stimulated. Their spirits have to be stimulated. We've had two years where thousands have not been in school. We don't see it now. It's invisible. But the, the, there's a time when it will come and we might see something and we don't want to see that. We want to give the children this opportunity. So um, I believe that everyone understands how important it is to maintain a safe campus in every single school. Public schools are set to reopen on January 11th next year. The body of four-year-old Dianya Bella Walker in a colorful coffin design with the cartoon character Peppa Pig along with a picture of her were placed in a hearse and transported in a silent motorcade from Serenity Funeral Home on Blue Hill Road to the Linden Pindling International Airport shortly before 8.30 this morning. Baby Bella was killed in early November allegedly by the hands of her mother's boyfriend Darian Smith. Organizer of the event Patrice Hannah Carey spoke with reporters at Serenity. And so this is a, a last gift to Dionya's father, her family and those that knew her well and for us as a body of people so that we don't we just don't let this baby just um, travel from Grand Bahama, come here alive, leave here dead, go in the grave and there's no memory or nothing that we do to, to really represent that and so this motorcade is based on returning the love showing that we here in New Providence we will work together we do care and we're going to make it happen to bring awareness and prevention to stuff like this Police say baby Bella died of blunt force trauma. Since the incident, her mother, Ostanya Walker, has been charged along with Smith in connection with her death. Following her death, 
Her maternal grandmother, Mona Lisa Walker, and father, Dino Smith, were in a legal battle on who should have the right to bury her. The court ultimately ruled in Bella's favor, Bella's father's favor, rather, as she lived with her father from she was an infant on Grand Bahama. Attorney Maria Daxon, who represented Mr. Smith, was asked what the impact of Bella's death will be. Oh, trust me, it's going to be a big problem. We are going to change some stuff in this country. We are going to have that Child Protection Act amended. We are going to ask this government to bring some policies in place. Before you move, investigate. Before you move, investigate. It is unfair for a child to be taken out of one situation, put in the next, and social service was not involved. This can't happen no more in this country. We need to be looking after our children. We need to be there to protect our children. And if we don't, we can leave a bad taste in our children. Senate President Lachelle Adderley, who was present for the motorcade and was among the many that spoke out for baby Bella in the aftermath of her death, says that it's vitally important that she was at the silent motorcade to show support, not just in words, but in action. I pledge my support to lend my full, full, every five of my being to assisting and doing the best I can to pass legislation with respect to all forms of domestic and gender-based violence. It's vitally important that everyone within the society feels protected and whatever legislation comes to the Senate, we by sure, by all means, as I told a few friends from the Senate, fellow senators, if we have to sit all night, they must be passed. A motorcade will also take place for baby Bella over on Grand Bahama, which will be her final resting place. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.